In this test you will try out your braking skills on Yamaha Grand Majesty 250. The objective of this test is to brake and come to a stop in the March goal area 500 meters ahead of the starting point. To avoid disqualification be careful not to exceed the time limit or ride out of bounds. Designed to help the rider find the correct braking point, braking will begin at close to maximum speed, requiring more stopping distance than you may think. By taking advantage of the distance display board and signs, try to pinpoint the appropriate braking point. Should you need to, be aggressive in using the L2 button on the strafe to so crouch down. In this test you will be using a Honda CBR 600 rr to undergo the same test as attempted in the Braking Basics 1 test. Consider it a lightweight, high-powered super sports machine, the 600cc Honda CBR has both great acceleration and high braking performance. With this in mind, the braking points will be completely different from what you experienced in the Braking Basics 1 test. Be sure to look for the distance display board and signs along the course to find the best braking point for this machine. Test your basic cornering skills by doing 3 laps on a circular 30 radius course. The test machine will be a Suzuki Skywave 250 SS. To avoid disqualification, stay within the time limit and be careful not to touch the cones along the outer edge or ride right into the gravel along the inner edge. The trick to passing this test is to hold a steady banking angle while controlling the racing line with correct application of the throttle and rear brakes. This test is designed to help you learn how to control your cornering by understanding how the racing line is affected by throttle and brakes with leaning. For this test you will be using a Yamaha XJR1300 to undergo the same test as you did in the Riding Basics 1 circular laps test. Although the key to clearing this test is the same, bear in mind that you are no longer on a scooter. Yeah, Yamaha XJR1300 is a big machine, warranting a much increased lean angle. Also important to remember is that the larger the placement and higher cornering performance lead to much faster speeds. Because of this, throttling and rear braking will affect the racing line differently than when you were on the Suzuki Skywave 250SS. This test takes place on a home stretch of the Fuji Speedway where you will be undertaking a cone slalom test on the Yamaha T-Max. Be careful not to touch the cones or swerve on the grass as you will be disqualified. Falling off or exceeding the time limit are also grounds for disqualification. Try to maintain a good rhythm by synchronizing the handling, throttle and rear brakes as you clear each line of cones. The trick to passing this test is to maintain enough speed to continue a rhythm of run. Taking place on one of the carpet curves at Winning Motegi, this test is all about learning basic skills of cornering, and the machine you will be riding on is the Yamaha XJR1300. Here you can hone up such basic riding skills as braking, cornering and acceleration. This is the tightest curve at Winning Motegi. Keep an eye out for a distance display board on the side of the course to determine the brake, and try to accelerate as soon as your machine changes direction, and be sure to take advantage of the wide course to practice finding the best racing line. This test consists of riding from 2nd to the 4th corner Laguna Seca Raceway using a front sprint ST. Keep in mind that the braking point will be different for each corner, as will the acceleration point. Try to remember that the key to passing this test is to focus on the corners, as you look for the best racing line and maintaining as much speed as possible. 
Although the number appearing on the track side display board is there to help you gauge the distance to the next corner, note that this is not to denote actual distance. The closer you get to the corner, the smaller the number will become. You use this information in deciding when to brake and how to create the best racing line. This test will see you facing corners with decreasing radio and amateur scores. The stage has been set at El Capitan and your machine is a Honda VFR 400R. To take advantage of the wide course, accelerate early to gain speed quickly. As this is a road course that has been cornered on for this test, there are no distance display boards telling you how close you are to the next corner. Observe the surrounding scenery to decide on the best breaking point. Don't let first impressions fool you as what appears to be a tight corner may change radius further back or end up being a sweeper without a camber. Diversity is what makes this course so distinctive. Keep trying until you can find the best racing line. In this test you will be driving Suzuka GSX-R 600 and experience ultra fast speeds on a high speed ring. You will be going full throttle at top speeds of 250 km per hour for long stretches. Be careful not to underestimate the stopping distance or lose control of your machine as you brake from top speeds. Also remember that the stopping distance from such breakneck speeds will be much greater than you think and that the wind pressure and gravity from braking will make cornering a different experience from that of lower speeds. Once again, there are no distance display boards, so you will have to try the test repeatedly to figure out when to accelerate, how to approach the corners and what are the best braking points. Passing this test will take you out of the novice class. To do so, you must undergo a time trial around the Ontoring Mini version. At only 1 km in length, the Ontoring Mini is a relatively short course, but the narrow track width and mirrored corners makes it a highly technical course. Be sure to decelerate properly and take the corners into account when looking for the best racing lines. Memorize the course completely before you venture out and remember to distinguish when to decelerate and when to accelerate. Your ride for this test will be a Yamaha T-Max, the leading sports scooter on the market. Okay, so I passed all license tests from novice class, so I acquired a novice license. Now try to obtain the junior class license. Also, rather than in Gran Turismo, we acquire riding gear. For bronze we have Arai, RS Taichi and Kushi Tennis uh, riding gears. When it comes to silver, uh, price for all silver we can acquire again array and Kshitani but also polyphony digital signed pants and short leather gloves those would be great for uh, one or two events also we got all golds so you know Kitagawa's riding gear <laughs> just like in MotoGP also, just like in older Gran Turismo games, we acquire a vehicle if we get all golds in uh, uh, specific license tests. The price is Honda CB400 SS, race modified. So let's select number 26, why not? I would like to use this bike for at least one event, would be a good idea. So. It's time to move on to the junior class. This test is conducted on the first corner of Tsukuba circuit. Tighter at exit than at entry, this is more of a complex corner than a single corner. If you drift to the inside of the track too soon, then you will end up going wide at the exit. Be careful not to close the throttle or brake to try and modify your racing line as that will add to your time or worse yet, cause you to veer off course. To avoid such situations, shorten the distance coming out of the corner by breaking as far in the corner as possible. 
Building on the mountainous section of El Capitan, this test will give you the opportunity to hone your braking and corner skills on downhill terrain. Take extra care at the left corner immediately following the starting point, as it is easy to hit of course here. The open curve up ahead is also tricky. Finding the right braking point won't be easy, so practice until you find what works best. The two left corners that follow the hairpin have different radius, so focus on the acceleration line as you exit the hairpin and find the right racing line to clear these through corners smoothly. In doing so, you should be able to improve your speed control. For this test, three signs are placed on the straight course. As you approach each sign, an arrow will point to either side. The objective of this test is to veer to the appropriate side when indicated by the flashing arrow. Should you misjudge the veer to the right side, you may end up riding onto the tire barrier in front of a sign or hit the wall and fall over, resulting in disqualification. You will also be disqualified if you overrun the marked wall area. The trick to doing well on this course is to decelerate and accelerate quickly. Steering rhythmically as you pass each sign with optimal use of the throttle is also the key. Machine used for this test is a Honda VFR. Slalom test encountered in novice class is repeated here, but this time using a Honda CB1300 Superboy UR instead of a Yamaha Tamax. By moving from a scooter to a motorbike, not only will there be a change in riding performance, but the higher displacement will lead to higher speeds, making it important to handle the throttle with even more vigor than before. Furthermore, cruising at higher speeds will make it more difficult to adjust your speed with the rear brakes. Because of this, the risk of swerving, of course, or onto a cone becomes greater. To avoid such errors, make sure you do a thorough job of finding the best racing line. The slalom test that was conducted using a Honda CB1300 Ball UR is repeated here, but this time riding two up. The basic racing line remains the same, and the same speed control techniques apply as when driving solo, but the addition of a passenger leads to an increase in overall weight, shifting weight balance. As a result, the machine will not maneuver as easily or accelerate as quickly when you try to clean cones. Compensate, you will have to turn wider and still throttle sooner. This test will be held on Suzuka Circuit, where you will ride from the S-Band to the opposite bank on a Yamaha FZR 400. You will face four consecutive corners, left, right, left and right. Of these corners, no two will have the same radius or the same approach. Use a throttle to switch smoothly between acceleration and deceleration going for a rhythmical ride. Note that the last corner is not only a right corner on the opposite bank, but one of decreasing radius. Hold back your urge to rush to the inner edge and grip deep. Wait until you are deep in the corner and are sure that you have changed direction before you accelerate. Held on the infamous corner of Suzuka Circuit, this test has you clearing an also fast 130R corner on a Kawasaki Z1000. High speed cornering from speeds from up to 440 km per hour can be accelerating, but at the same time it requires an accurate racing line and great speed control. The key to attacking this corner will be to hold back on the deceleration and use the whole width of the course to accelerate quickly out of the corner. This is a complex cornering test held on Deep Forest Raceway, where the corners are not only relentless but feature plenty of undulation. The corners here are diverse from a high-speed downhill corner at the foot of the tunnel to a blind approach into an uphill corner. The track surface can be rough too, so you will also have to be careful not to lose control. As you will be going from one corner into another one with different radius, you will not have the chance to accelerate in an upright position. You will however be able to gain enough speed and momentum as long as you choose the right racing line, the most vital factor in cornering the course. This bike is a Kawasaki GPZ900R. This challenge introduces you to the spoon corner of Suzuka Circuit using a Ducati 999R. The most difficult part of this course is the two left corners with different radars that are preceded by a high-speed uphill right corner immediately after the start. The approach to the first left corner has very few landmarks, making it difficult to know when to brake. The exit out of this corner then becomes the approach to the next corner. Try and clip the apex, the point in which you come closest to the inside of the track, as far back as possible and use the entire width 
on the course to follow the basics of an out-in-out out racing line. Clear this time trial and you will graduate from junior class. This trial involves one lap around the 3.6 km deep forest raceway on a Moriwaki CBR 600RR. Not only have the engine and brakes been upgraded, but the cornering performance has also been improved. To start off, accustom yourself to the behavior of this particular machine. You will be surprised at how well it reacts. The course itself consists of a long stretch in which you can ride full throttle and some exciting ups and downs. The key to passing this test lies in how quickly you can find the optimal braking points and racing lines. You must also be extremely aware of falling off as the track surface can be rough in places. Okay, so now I got the junior class license passed with all golds. So again, I got the junior license. Now try to obtain the expert class license. And of course, a lot of riding gear would be available to us right now. Again, Arai, Spiri, RS Taichi, Kushitani, even camouflage pants by Polyphony Digital for all silver times we got Shoy Lewis Letters Super Phantom for street bikes and some other stuff which would be interesting if I check it out later for all golds we have again uh, riding gears obtained by MotoGP riders and another Honda bike this time it's Honda CB400 4, which is a, this time it is a street bike with uh, an optional exos upgrade. So it's time for expert class, I guess. This test involves riding on Tsukuba circuit. You'll begin right after the first hairpin and go through Dunlop corner, chicane and the second hairpin, stopping midway through the back straight. In the section that takes you from the Dunlop corner to the chicane, you will be tackling the course section that was constructed especially for more bikes. Think of the right Dunlop corner and right corner at the entrance of the chicane as being one big corner and look to the inner curb of the right corner of the chicane to find the best racing line. After veering to the left from there, find the racing line that will let you accelerate in a straight line towards the second hairpin. This test will feature the Grand Valley Speedway riding from the home straight to the Harpin Line first corner. As you ride full throttle through the home straight, you will approach an easy left turning curve at speeds of over 240 km per hour just before the first corner. You will need to bank to the left and brake full force, making it important to stabilize your machine and find the right braking point. From here on, as long as you can clip the apex as far back as possible, it will be just full throttle all the way. Just be careful you don't ride, of course. This is a repeat of the signal test from the junior class. The difference is being that the ride will now be at turn speed triple and the number of signals have increased from 3 to 5. The acceleration and acceleration should be precise and throttling and handling rhythmic. The added signals will result in faster speeds as you approach each signal, making it difficult to recover from mistakes try to maintain both good handling precision and balanced speed control.
For this test, you will ride MV Agusta M4 1000S from the high speed S band to the hairpin corner on the Grand Valley Speedway. To maintain speed along the S band, try to control your speed by staying away from the brakes and relying only on the throttle. While leaning, hold back the urge to open up the throttle until your machine has changed direction. If you don't, your bike will swing wide, not only making the approach to the next corner more difficult, but also increasing the chance of veering off course. Also remember that riding onto the inner curb while fully leaning will change your racing line, making you swing wide towards the outer edge. As for the approach to the hairpin, make sure you clip the apex as far back as possible and choose the racing line that allows you to accelerate out of the corner. This test will allow you to experience the section between the high-speed headband and the approach to the hairpin corner of midfield raceway. Because you will be weaving left and right through the S-band and braking towards the hairpin while the bike is still leaning, sudden deceleration may cause slippage and lead to a fall. Spend plenty of time practicing your speed control into the hairpin and holding the racing line. Once you've cleared the hairpin, an uphill high-speed S-band awaits. At the first left corner of this S-band, clip the apex as far back as possible. The right corner that follows is less tight, so try and hold the racing line that will let you rip through the top speeds. Your ride for this test is a Suzuki GSX-R 1000. This test is held on the last corner of the Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia. Ahead of a big decreasing radius corner is the hairpin-like last corner that leads to a strafe. The big decreasing radius corner is a sweeper, so if you wish you can ride the inner edge all the way, but that will prevent you from riding last corner smoothly. Instead, approach the last corner from outside and find a racing line that will allow you to clip the apex as far back as possible. Because the goal line has been set halfway through the straight, the exit speed from last corner will impact the speed of acceleration, will greatly influence the goal time. Therefore, in this situation, it is best to focus on the final goal time rather than worrying about the intermediate time. In this test, you will tackle the first section of the Nürburgring Nordschleife in Germany using a Yamaha MT-01. Built in 1927, the Nürburgring Nord Loop is known to be a super high-speed circuit. It is, however, also notorious for the narrow track width, as well as the widely undulating and bumpy track surface. There are no distance display boards, making it more difficult to time the cornering approach. Instead, observe the surrounding trees and surface of the track to determine how to time your approach. Compared to the high speed you will be averaging, the escape zone is narrow, making it feel as though you are going faster than you actually are. To achieve the best times, try to maintain full throttle for as long as you can. You will now be challenging the successive ultra high speed corners located in the mid section of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Be prepared for a technical ride in which you will have to break and corner whilst going downhill or approach a blind corner going uphill. Not only will good acceleration be important here, but good precision braking will also be important in order to stay within the confines of the narrow curves. Find the optimum braking level and keep trying until you find the best performance. The bike you will be using is a BMW Motorrad K1200R. This test section is on a much battled section of Suzuka circuit, from 130R to the chicane and through the last corner, on the Yamaha TZ250. This commercial racer will give you a different experience in terms of braking points and racing line. Also beware the chicane that follows, which has been created specifically for two-wheelers. It is tighter than you think and slightest braking error will cause you to overrun. Make sure you decelerate properly and find racing line that uses the entire width of the course. Once you have cleared this section, all you have to do is drive through the last corner. You'll have ample width to go full throttle and then head for the goal that awaits just before home strafe. The graduation test from the expert class is a time trial on the Autumn Ring track using a Yamaha MT-01. 
packed with variety, this course consists of many low to medium speed corners. It will also require you to hit the brakes full force from a high speed section, as well as take you through S-bends, uphill, downhill and blind corners, giving you the opportunity to test out all of the technical skills you've practiced to this point. Use the different techniques to find the smoothest racing lines and reduce your time with careful use of throttle and brakes. Ok, so now the expert class is done. I passed all license tests with gold times. Now try to obtain a super class license. This would be an interesting experience. And of course, again, a lot of riding gear arrives to our garage. Simpson Shoe, Shitani, Oris Taichi, all point stars. Interesting ones for silver. We got uh, again a nice set. I guess a lot of those are available for street bikes, so I don't bother myself with that. For all golds, again, we have race outfits. Oh, Shui X11, Daijiro, Kato. Let him rest. And another Honda bike. This time Honda an R750. This time without optional exhaust upgrade. But I guess I can live with that. Now it's time for super license test. Reputed to be the leader of the Japanese racing scene since the 70s, Tsukuba Circuit is where you will challenge your first lesson in the Superclass, a set of full course time trials. At 2 km in length, this circuit is on the shorter side, but many of the corners are difficult to tackle, turning this into a technical challenge. Accelerating out of the last corner, which is preceded by a 400 meter back strafe, is key in achieving the best time. Your bike is a commercial racer, Yamaha TZ125. Due to the small engine size, too much throttling or braking will result in unexpected time loss. Try to focus on how you ride in and out of the corners with even more care than in previous tests. This test will offer the challenge of a time trial through the Cultural and Economic Center of the United States, Mid-Manhattan. After traveling south on Broadway, you will come up 7th Avenue, clipping the southernmost section of Central Park and head back to the starting point. One lap on this course is 4170 meters and your bike will be a Yamaha VMAX. What makes this course tricky are the right angle turns, characteristics of city streets. 
Although you may think that all of the turns are the same, different circumstances will inevitably require you to change where you need to clip the apex. In corners where a long scrape awaits, the exit speed will greatly influence the overall lap time, so try and exit with as much speed as possible. Also make sure to create the best racing line possible whenever the road width changes after a turn. At Columbus Circle, remember what it was like to ride along the inner edge of a circular course and this will greatly aid your approach. This test is a time trial of Grand Valley Speedway using a Honda CBR 1100XX. Note that this course has three distinct sections, the high speed section in the first half, the low to medium speed section in the middle part of the course and the medium to high speed section in the last part. Try to grasp the characteristics of each section and attack with aggressive throttling and braking. At 5 km of length, this is one of the longer courses. Maintaining good concentration until the end may prove difficult. Of special note is the chicane before the last corner. Make sure you don't overrun it or miss the correct racing line. This test offers you the chance to use a race pack Honda CB750F, a bike created with the super bike racers of the 80s in mind. The course you will tackle is the most prominent circus on the west coast of the United States, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Enjoy the challenge of the steep inclines of the chicane that was created at the end of the back straight, the infamous course crew. There are also many other corners that connect one long straight to another, but with the exception of the chicane at the first and last corners. Most of them are complex corners with radius that become wider at the exit than the entry. Choose a dynamic riding style that lets you accelerate out of the corners at the outer edge. For entry into the slightly left-wearing home strafe or into the course through, 
find a racing line that will give you the shortest travel distance and the best time results. Still no among full racing enthusiasts as Sears Point Racetrack, Infineon Raceway is the stage for this next test. For this you will be using a race pack Honda CB1300 Super Bowl Dior, a 4km in length, the difference in elevation on this course is an astonishing 50 meters. What makes this circuit unique are the numerous vertical blind corners that take advantage of this difference in elevation. Since there are no signs along the course to show the distance to the next corner, getting the braking point right is crucial in achieving the best time results. Because this is a technical course with little room for accelerating in an upright position, keep trying until you can find the best braking points. In this test, you will face a full course time trial on Midfield Raceway, a high speed circuit where the home straight lasts for 1 km, taking up 1 quarter of the circuit. For this task, you will be using a machine well suited to a high speed ride, Kawasaki Ninja ZX10R. Key to reducing your time lies in increasing your average speed. Accelerate quickly out of corners, which are mostly medium to high speed, so you can ride a full throttle for longer. Even if you are able to clear this course on one try, keep trying for better time results as you master the skills of high speed cornering. This stage will see you undergo a time trial at night time under the city lights of Special Stage Route 5. As you might expect from a street course, Special Stage Route 5 is full of overlapping corners making it difficult to hold the racing line. Due to the lack of runoff areas, the rider is constantly under the pressure of running of course. Use the power of the Yoshimura Hayabusa X1 to cover the basics, an example, accelerating quickly out of the corners. 
This will be the key to reducing your time. Even though you will be riding through streets at night, there will be plenty of landmarks for you to use in finding the right racing lines and braking points, so look for those that will provide the smoothest ride. As one of the oldest track in Japan, Fuji Speedway has seen many great battles in this time. In this time trial you will experience Fuji Speedway as it was in the 90s. Your bike will be an Aprilia RSV1000R factory racing modified spec. For best results you will have to gain as much speed as possible through the high speed corners that connect the slower corners. The first corner to the first chicane, the first chicane to the hairpin, the hairpin to the second chicane. These are complex corners in which slower corners are interconnected by wider high speed corners. Riding full throttle all the way is not the answer, however, as that will prompt you to swing wide, making you lose precious time or worse yet lead you off the track. Instead, attack the corners in sections, finding the best racing line for each section and increasing the average speed. This test will see you ride through the precipitous cliffs of the Trial Mountain circuit using a race spec modified Kawasaki Zephyr 1100. The course is 400 km in length and features a great deal of undulations, so load control is the key to achieving the best time results. Although this bike is race modified, Zephyr is not as aggressive as the latest super sports machines. Be careful not to go too fast on the corners or you may end up slipping and falling or riding off course. The middle part of the course has very few escape zones, so good speed control is a must. There are also several tunnels along the course, some of which have corners near the exit. You'll have to start the approach into these corners while you're in the tunnel, so be careful. What's most important when riding on this course is to memorize the course layout and maintain balanced control of your machine.
The final test in Superclass is held on one of the most prominent tracks in Japan, Suzuka Circuit. You will undergo a full course time trial on a race pack modified Honda CBR 1000RR. With its high speed corners, S bands, and hairpins connected by a strafe on either side, Suzuka is one of the most technical circuits in the world. The key to conquering this course is simply to memorize it completely. Through the entire course, visualize when to brake, when to open the throttle, and how to hold the racing line into the next corner. At the same time, don't forget that you are on a high powered machine coming from the same lineage as the Honda's MotoGP machine, the RC211V. The CBR1000RR has great potential. Keep this in mind as you ride through this course. Alright, so now I got a super license. I passed all tests in Tourist Trophy. I have obtained the super license, so I'm probably one of the best drivers right now. So, I passed all license tests, so now let's check out all the riding gear I acquired, I acquired right now. Again, a nice set of uh, street outfits mostly for all silvers I might actually have a chance to acquire also some race outfits also made by RS Taichi and all golds obviously give me those riding gears outfits with polyphonic digital original colors great I would like to use them for the last event. And again, this time not a Honda. The prize bike is Yoshimura Katana 1135R. So all license tests are passed and I acquired a lot of riding gear and few bikes to start up. Next time I will pass a lot of challenges so be prepared and see you next time.